guys, I am back with another book talk that goes along with the other two book talks I have recently put up. And so, yeah, you probably guessed it. It is going to be The Death Cure by James Dashner, the third and final book in the Maze Runner series. Oh my goodness. I know I said at the end of my Scorch Trials uh, video, I was going on and on about how my book hadn't come in the mail, and I was freaking out because I had finished the Scorch Trials, but I couldn't go straight on to The Death Cure because I didn't have it. Well, it came in the mail, finished the book I was reading before that, and so then I read this, and this is what has consumed most of my winter break, is reading this, and it's so good. Starting off the talk, let's talk about The Cranks. Um, that's some scary crap right there, like, to know you have a disease and think you only have, like, a few more months if you're lucky to live, but, like, the last few months you'll have, like, no control over yourself and you'll basically be, like, an animal, and it's, that's scary, that is extremely scary to know that you're eventually just gonna go crazy and, like, end up killing people and eating them and becoming a cannibal, like, that's terrifying. Like, if I, if, like, the flare actually existed and I had it, I would want to be put out of my misery. I think they should have made that an option for people to be able to um, be euthanized if they wanted to. Because I wouldn't want to go through that, and I know a lot of other people wouldn't want to go through that. And then, as they're doing a kind of population control with this and trying to keep the healthy people away from people who have the flare... They um, boxed off the big cities like Denver and I guess it would be Dallas and New York City and Chicago and all these other cities they have boxed off to keep the healthy people in and keep them safe from the flare and then they also have this separate place outside of the bigger cities called Crank Palace for each one and that's where they send people who they find to catch the flare. They send them there and I mean it's nice that what they were trying to do was you know still give them a place to live out their lives until they actually lose it and then they're past gone and then they send them out to the scorch I guess it is is where they drop them off and it's nice that they did that and they built the houses and like they had like a recreation center and they had like all this stuff built so they could still live a normal life but I mean you have to remember though these people basically are seeing it as their end of their life and they have nowhere else to go so why would you think that this separate city you've made for them will stay intact until they're past gone and they get moved on to uh, the next step. I mean, they have nothing else to live for. I mean, they have nothing else to lose. They're basically about to die. This place is about to break hell loose and everything's going to be torn apart and you're lucky if you have guards that are able to keep everything intact while they're pillaging and killing each other and just, you know, kind of like laying around and waiting to go crazy. I mean, that's just kind of be, to be expected when you're putting people who have nothing else to live for together in a place. And I think, like, I know we only saw Denver in this book, but I mean, it makes it sound like it was a bunch of the other bigger cities that walled off too. But in my opinion, I don't feel like they did enough to keep the city safe, like keep people that are healthy in the city from catching the flare. I mean, I don't know if that's how it was in all the other cities. I mean, it makes you think it kind of was, but I mean, I know for sure in Denver. I mean, they had the people going around and like randomly testing people, but like there are still people running around with the flare in the city that hadn't been caught. Like maybe have like a mandatory testing every day, like a testing standard station or whatever built into every house and have everybody be tested every morning or something and then that way it's easier to you know catch the people who have it and put them out before like it actually spreads because I mean people in Denver are walking around with masks and they're scared to go out because they might catch the flare when half the city probably already has the flare and it's just sad that they couldn't keep everybody combined like that to uh, keep them safe like they were supposed to in the first place talking about characters uh, let's start off with Newt. I wanted to cry, but again, I was freaking spoiled before I read the series that uh, Newt was going to die, and it's not okay, guys. It's not okay to spoil people. And this spoiler came from freaking 8 Tracks. Thank you, 8 Tracks, and people who make playlists for books I'm about to read. Thank you. I hate you. 
Anyway, so, I mean, it was really sad, and I felt sad, and especially after you read the note that Thomas gave him, telling him to put him out of his misery, and Thomas hadn't read the note by the time they first found Newt, so he couldn't put him out of the misery, and then when they're sitting there, and the cranks have taken over the city, and he's just standing there, and he finds Newt, and Newt's screaming, and he's going crazy, and he's just like, shoot me, shoot me, just kill me, you can't even follow one simple order I gave you, as my friend, you would do this, and all this stuff, and it's either you kill me or I kill you. It just made me really sad. And then he, he's like, and then, you know, he gets his moment of clarity, and he's like, please, Tommy, please. And my heart just broke. And then, you know, Thomas had the balls and did it, and made me sad. And when we were first given the news about Newt having the flair, I was so sad. I was like, of course, my favorite character has to be one of the ones that is not immune. Of course. Also, my favorite character also has to be one of the ones that dies in the last book. Like, we are so close to being done and free, and he has to die. Like, why do you do this to me? Like, I'm just not going to have favorite characters anymore because they always end up dying. And it's just, it's not okay. It's not okay with me. It's not okay with the characters because they're dead. It's not okay with everybody else who finds them as their favorite characters. It's not okay because you're sending me through emotional turmoil once again because my favorite character is freaking dead. Like, this is not okay. This is not okay. No. Also, let's talk about, what is she, uh, Ava Page, who is the... Chancellor? Is it Chancellor or Chancellor? One of those two. Which basically means she is the head of the government. Like, she's in charge of, I guess, is it just the United States? That has a, I guess it's all in the world, but I guess she's in charge of the United States or the entire world or whatever it, whatever it is. We had no, no mention of this lady in the first two books, which I can kind of understand because, I mean, they took places in areas where there wasn't really the world but so we get the first mention of Ava Page who's the ruler I guess of the world and you know you see posters of her face all over the city and telling you warning signs of the flare and all this stuff but other than that we don't really get any information on her and I would think we would be able to considering that George and Brenda both actually worked for Wicked before they went to the Scorch, and that Brenda tells Thomas that the only people he can trust is her and Chancellor Page. So I would think we would get more of a backstory, like filled in on who Chancellor Page is from ben Brenda as she's telling Thomas, because honestly, we don't know anything about this lady. We just know she kind of rules the world, and we, of course, she's like the head of Wicked, because Wicked is underneath her rule, and... It's just like, who is she? Is she good? Is she bad? Like, who is this lady? Like, how'd she come to power? Like, what happened? Like, we really don't have much knowledge as to what happened to the world once the flare hit. Like, I wish we would get more about her and find out, like, was she good or is she bad? Because she did save Thomas from getting dissected. And then after that, she also left the note in the map for Thomas to help get the rest of the immunes out into this safe actual safe place and so it makes her sound good but then you know you read the epilogue which is yet again another uh note from her which is how all the books end and she's talking about how they failed but they succeeded in their mission and they've brought all these immunes to this safe place that is truly safe for them and they're the future of our uh race and all this stuff and so is she good? Is she bad? Are they actually like watching and this is gonna be some other kind of trial or something? Like I just don't know. So I'm not sure if we're really supposed to trust her or not. Because it kind of goes both ways. Like I don't know. I also wish with this series, I mean I really like the series guys. Don't get me wrong. I love the series. Um, I wish we would have gotten some more backstory on the world. Like we understand the flare happened and uh, people started going crazy and this disease was r unleashed from the uh, disease control area and started, you know, infecting people and killing them. But is there more to it? Like, was it like slow or did it just like happen overnight? Like what happened? How was it released? Like what made them decide to start like quarantining areas and like, I don't, I don't know. I just wish I would have got more backstory on city and like how this all happened and came to be. Cause you know, you get kind of 
like glimpses of it especially from like thomas's past like with his mom and then when he was taken away from his mom and all this stuff also <laughs> as i mentioned in my maze runner book talk i was really happy there was no love triangle and then in my Scorch book talk, I was like, well, I spoke too soon because there was a love triangle. It was Aries, Thomas, and Teresa. And then I was like, well, just kidding, because Teresa and Aries were just a ploy, and it was Thomas and Teresa. And then, obviously, I had spoken again too soon because there was a freaking love triangle. It was Thomas, Teresa, and Brenda, which is not okay because you're tugging at my feelings because I like Brenda, but I also like Teresa. But Teresa's kind of annoying because of everything she's done to Thomas, but she only did it to protect Thomas, but really, I mean, you just kind of ruined it all there. And then, you're like, you've got Thomas in this book. He's trying to choose who he wants to go for. I mean, he still really likes Teresa because they've been through a lot. Like, they, they worked for Wicked together and everything, but also all the stuff she's done to him, he doesn't want that. And then he also wants Brenda, and, you know, I don't know what's going on there. They just got a connection. That's just all it is. And, you know, it's not okay because he's going back and forth. I mean, he still hates Teresa, but he still likes her. And he really likes Brenda, but he can't go with Brenda because he doesn't know how he feels about Teresa. So he's, like, tugged back and forth. And I'm like, I don't like love triangles. I don't understand why YA authors think teenagers love love triangles. We hate them. We hate them with a burning passion. Why would you do this to us? Like, I don't want a love triangle in my life. Like, I don't want to be thrown and choosing between two guys or I don't want to be one girl who's being paired against another girl because a guy's trying to choose between the two of us. I don't want that to be my life so why would I want to read something about that because it's just annoying and it's like well who are you going to end up with? But you know what? The best way to solve a freaking love triangle is to kill off one of the people which is actually what happens in this book because Teresa you know she gets crushed by the ceiling and that was really sad. And then you see Thomas, and he's heartbreaking, and he's stopping, and he's trying to help her, but he can't really do anything because she's crushed, and she's basically bleeding to death under this ceiling. And you see that he really, really cares for her, and, you know, you think maybe, maybe he would choose her. But then, you know, they go through the flat trance. The book ends, and basically him and Brenda are together. Um, I kind of did like the way this book ended. I liked how it had, kind of has a happy ending. I mean, all of these people died, but had a happy ending sort of because they all got to a safe place where they're gonna live out their, their lives hopefully also okay the right arm when we are first introduced to the right arm i wasn't quite sure whether we're supposed to believe that they're helping or what um i thought they were good guys like everybody thinks they're good guys you know they're against wicked everybody's against wicked wicked's the bad people blah 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 and you thought they were going to come in and take over and, you know, try to right all the wrong that Wicked has done. No, they're freaking going to go in and blow up the entire building. Like, why? When, since when does blowing everything up solve a problem? It doesn't. That's why the world is always in war, because people decide, I'm going to blow you up and threaten you because that's what's going to get this fixed, right? No, that's just going to cause more problems. So let's just blow up the entire compound. You know, it's not like we got 500 people hidden in the maze that need to be taken out. No, we're just going to blow up the entire compound and leave them there to die. Wow, that's a great freaking idea. And then when Thomas is like, wait, there's people in here. We need to go save them. Freaking Vince is like, you know what? No, we don't need to. We just need to blow this up and get it done with. And if you decide you're going to turn your back on us and you're going to go, consider yourself a target. Let him go. They didn't kill him. But still, like, you didn't want to save 500 innocent lives. You would rather blow up an entire building. What is wrong with you? Like, it doesn't matter if they're for your cause or against it. That's still 500 innocent lives that you're about to kill. Because... You want to blow up a building. You could at least wait and have the courtesy for them to get out because honestly, Thomas was not going to try and stop you if once he got everybody out, they weren't going to try to stop you. But no, and you didn't even wait. You just started blowing up. So that killed about 300 people because they had about 200 left when they got to the safe place. You killed 300 innocent lives because you couldn't wait and you just wanted to blow up a freaking building. Like really? Anyways, overall, I thought this was an absolutely fantastic series. I loved it, and I am so ready to read The Kill Order. Definitely glad I finished off 2014 with The Death Gear and this series. I am super, super proud of that. So, I will see you guys next time with a book talk, type of Wednesday, or a tag video. Until then, I'm Chrissy. Goodbye!